Welcome back guys, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about the Hive project. The Hive project is actually known for being a platform for security incident response. So basically what kind of platform is the Hive project? So first, Hive project is considered as an open source platform. Um, the actual objective of the Hive project is to actually collaborate and exchange information between security analysts for example the first one here as you can see incident response collaboration between security analysts mean that if you are working in a SOC okay security operation center analysts inside SOC can create cases right and exchange incident information using the Hive project to facilitate the exchange of information. You can um, consider this uh, much like any other task collaboration platforms such as Google Workspace, Microsoft Teams, um, Trello. These kind of uh, uh, platforms they are used to actually exchange and collaborate, right? So the Hive project similarly works in the same manner. In that it is actually designated for security incident response uh, exchange of information. So the first thing what we can do with the Hive project is collaboration first between security analysts. That's one. Next, we can exchange information related to incidents, and there is the capability of live streams. So, in the Hive project, we have something called live stream where we share live information about an incident so whenever we import an incident or we create a case for an incident we can actually share information about the incident between multiple analysts at the same time using the live streams live streams we can keep up with everything that's being uploaded or added to the case so how this is done by the way the first thing we do is to, we create a case so once we know that there is an incident and once we have analyzed the incident we can go ahead and create a case so case management and task follow-up once we create a case we can assign the case tasks so the tasks would be considered as a bench uh, as a um, center point for you to know what to do with the incident so for example you have analyzed uh, a breach in your network and you know what happened and who did that and what are the impacts so you will go ahead and create a case assign tasks to be done by the analysts okay so you create the case you assign the tasks and you add something i forgot to add this here you add something called let's do it like that observables so observables observables are um you can take it you, you can consider it as for example iocs okay um your, your observations about the incident so what have you seen while investigating the incident so you add all of that in the observables section of the case so the case has take it like that a case what does a case have first it has tasks okay what is to be done Next, it has TTPs. I'm going to talk about TTPs. And also, it has observables. So, tasks, we know we create the tasks to designate who will do the tasks and what is to be done. TTPs, once we analyze the incident and we know what happened, we can assign TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures, right? So, it's from the MITRE uh, ATT and CK framework. You design or you put here what kind of technique the attacker has used to perform the attack and lastly the observables such as IPs hashes domains any tangible observable you have seen while investigating the incident okay and for what we can do with the hive we can import cases from other platforms such as the seams and other sources so whatever the source or whatever the platform you're using for investigating the events you can actually import the events from the seams into the hive
immediately. And lastly, it supports various integrations, one of which is the integration with MISP. So what is an MISP? MISP is Malware Integration, uh, no, Malware Integration Sharing Platform. So what happens here is that Malware Information Sharing Platform, sorry, not integration, Malware, I'm gonna, let me write this, Malware Information Sharing Platform. Okay, so with MISPs, what we do with MISP normally, it's actually a threat intelligence platform for sharing and storing information uh, about malwares, indicators of compromise related to targeted attacks and other threats. So when we integrate that with the Hive, we allow the analyst in the SOC here to create cases from the MISP events. Okay. So it works similarly with importing events from SIEMs, right? Security Information Event Management. Now, it's going to be a problem if you don't know what's SIEM, right? <laughs> you should have, you should know what's SIEM. Okay, so that is an introduction about the Hive. Now, we're going to proceed and analyze uh, an FTP case where there is an exfiltration of data over FTP protocol. We're going to analyze the incident and see how we can create a case about the incident. Okay then, so here is the um, capture of the traffic and our job here is to, is to analyze what happened. So basically we can see we have, if we filter for FTP, okay, we can see multiple FTP packets. Not too many FTP packets, but there is a good number of FTP packets. As you can see all the time, we have the the first packet, packet number uh, 5, we can see this is the source IP address. The IP address that has initiated the connection, and this is the destination IP address, 42. So in our investigation, we're going to write in the observable section that the IP addresses are 46 and 42 where 46 is the source, the IP that initiated the attack, and 42 being the victim or the host, target host. And we see many other FTP packets where you can see exchange of, exchange of packets, information with traffic between the source and the destination. It's also use, very useful to know what is going on since FTP actually is a uh, not encrypted protocol. So we can see here what are the uh, commands used during the exchange of packets. As you can see, here is the requested command. The user is anonymous, as you can see here. The user is anonymous. And let's scroll down. Here we can see the uh, that the source is asking for the password. Password required for anonymous. The next packet, we see um, request command pass, mozilla at example.com. And here you can see the it said that the login incorrect being meaning that the password that has been typed isn't correct. Following up with the rest of the packets, aha, uh -huh, as you can see here, when the when this IP address 42 has typed the password as Raspberry, the 46 being the FTP server has responded with wait wait user logged in as you can see so the password is raspberry you can take this as another observable being the password that has that is correct uh, let's see here whatever what do we have else let's take a look at the commands that has been typed at the host okay PWD, this command has been issued to know what is the current working directory. Slash home slash pi is the current working directory. This is not an observable, by the way. You don't need to add this as an observable to your task, to your case. Now, as you can see here, we entered the passive mode. Now, as you can see, a command has been issued, CWD. Uh, 
let's see here. Okay. Transfer complete. We see here that um, let's see. Opening binary mode data connection for file lists. Okay. Again, logged in one more time. So it seems to me that it's only kinda someone has logged into the FTP server to issue certain commands. But we have to follow up with the rest of the commands as there may be more to the story. So passive mode. Aha. Uh -huh. Look take a look at this. So here there is a request to a file under the home slash home slash pi flag the text. So here we moved into another stage of the story which is data exfiltration okay now let's take a look at the ftb data what data has been exchanged or traveled in this connection so we see flag.txt under slash home slash pi and we see here there is a flag by the way so it's safe to say that this is kind of FTP data exfiltration, data being exfiltrated over FTP. Okay, now let's go ahead and create the tasks, the cases, sorry. So go here. Okay. By the way, we're using a room in TryHackMe. The room name is the Hive. And let's go now and open the browser, navigate to the deployment of Hive. Okay, now the username and password. So the username is analyst at tryhackme.me and the password is analyst1234. Okay, so here is what it looks like once you log into the hive. So as you can see, we have here we can create the new cases. Here we can see the tasks, my tasks. The tasks that you have assigned to yourself or that have been assigned by other analysts waiting tasks and alerts and finally the dashboards now as for uh, the dashboards the dashboards if you click on that nothing in here but we can create dashboards by the way we can list statistics on cases tasks observables metrics and more can be compiled and distributed on dashboards which can be used actually to generate useful KPIs, key performance indicators within an organization. So it's here you can track your metrics, task, observables, whatever you want to track and list statistics of, you can create dashboards for, for that. And that's it, it's very easy actually. Now title of the case. The case is FTP um, data exfiltration. Date now. Now, let's talk about these, by the way, the severity and the TLP. And also let's talk about the PAB. What are all of these and how can we select them? The first thing is the severity of the case. This showcases actually the level of the impact of the event or the incident being investigated. What kind of impact or the level of impact it has on the environment from low, medium to high to critical. So for this incident, we can select high, okay. TLP or traffic light protocol. As you can see, it has set of designations. These set of designations are responsible for ensuring that sensitive information is shared with the right audience. So here we designate the um, sensitivity of the information. As you can see, the scale ranges between full disclosure of information, white, and then red being the uh, most restricted level, no disclosure of information, meaning that the case is very sensitive and we don't want to disclose any information to anyone. So I'm going to go ahead and select red. Now PAP, PAP is actually st stands for the permissible actions protocol, permissible actions protocol. Now, as you can see, we have four levels as well. 
So it's used to indicate what an analyst can do with the information. Being with white, green, amber, and red. Whether an attacker can detect the current analysis state or defensive actions in place. The, it actually uses the color scheme the same as TLP. So we're going to go ahead and select amber. And now we're going to select the tags. So what are the tags? The tags here uh the words that can um express what is happening what happened in the investigation first we write ftp as a tag okay data exfiltration yeah that's it so next we write description about the attack or the analysis so here we type our observ our observations what happened so we can type here that um a suspected uh, breach over FTB followed by uh, exfiltration of data, specifically text files. As we saw in the, in the PICA files, there was an exfiltration of a text file, which is the flag file, by the way. Okay, now the case tags. So if you are the uh, man manager of the SOC team, you can here create tasks, or even if you are a senior uh, SOC member, you can here create tasks for other team members. So what kind of tasks we can create here? The first thing is investigate source and source of the attack. Uh, actually, I hit by mistake the create case button, but we can go back here to the tags and recreate the tags. Let's see. Um, so here's uh, here's information about the case. We can click on the case here and we can see the details that we have typed. Now we're going to go ahead to the tags to the um, where was the tasks. OK, so the tasks we can create create tasks here. The first thing is identify source of the attack normally it is IP address task group analysts okay we can create another task after we identify the source of the attack we identify identify the target host And then we, we assign this to the analysts. And after we identify the source of the attack and the target host, we identify as well the data being exfiltrated. Identify the exfiltrated data. Then we assign this to the analysts. OK. So now we created the task, the case, as you can see here, and we created tasks to be done. Now we go to the observables and also we have TTPs. Let's first assign the TTPs. We can add TTP from this button and we can collapse this and see we have exfiltration. The exfiltration technique actually we have a lot, but we're going to select exfiltration over um non-encrypted let's see where is the non-encrypted alternative physical medium over web service nope none of these it seems like we don't have let's scroll down now oh, here it is exfiltration over alternative protocol exfiltration over unencrypted because f2b is plain text protocol so we're going to select this as a TTP and add it and we will added the TTP we go now to the observables and add what we have observed while we were investigating the attack oops this is the filter add observables so the first observable is uh, guys the IP what is the IP address that I have observed we can go back now to the capture file and put the observables 
So, where is the button? Okay, here. Let's identify the source IP address first. Remove these. Okay, the source, as you can see, is 192.168.2342. So we go back. We type the IP 192.168. Twenty-three. One observable by line. Since here we are adding an IP address that has a, dis a distinct um, attribute, which is a source, we're not going to add more than one IP address. So, TLP Amper is an IOC. Of course not. Is this IP address an IOC? Meaning that it is considered as an indicator of compromise. Of course not. And here we define the way the information should be shared. I'm going to select Amper. I'm not going to select Red, meaning that it won't be shared with anyone. No, Amper, it means that we're going to be shared with a restricted audience. Okay, the value and has been cited. Has been cited means has this observable or the IP address been cited before in the information system. I'm going to select no, but if you select yes, you're going to add here. Um, I expected a drop down, but it didn't. Uh, okay, no problem. If this IP address has been cited before or it has been used or added in previous investigation, you're going to select here has been cited. But since because it didn't, so we're going to turn this off. Ignore for similarity. So here it means we don't correlate this observable with other sim similar observables. Now the tags. If you want tags, add the tags about this, we can add this as source IP. And lastly, description of the observable. So we can type here the IP address used to initiate the FTP connection. Create. Okay, that's one. You can add another one. And this time, it's going to be the destination IP for six. So again, it is an IP. 192.168.23.46. Amper. IOC. Uh, nope. Tags. Destination. IP. the IP address of the target FTP server. Okay, another one. This time it's going to be the file name. So the file name is flag.txt. You can add the full path to the files. Slash home, slash by. Okay, and is this an IOC? Nope. Has been cited? Nope. Tags. Um, let's. How can we type this? Exfiltrated data. Exfiltrated data. Define being exfiltrated. And we add this. Okay. Another thing to know, guys, is that we can add. We can actually add the capture itself, the packet capture. So we know that. There is a packet capture here. We can add it, by the way. So to do that, we're going to need to transfer the file from my machine to the try hacking machine. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I know this is impossible because they don't allow that. So I'm going to go ahead now and keep this as is and try to log into the platform from my virtual machine so I can upload the packet capture. See, it doesn't opening on my machine for some reason. Okay, let's see if I have internet access first. I have 
but I am not able to connect. Let's try other link. Try this one, try this one. Okay. Okay, it's open. Now let's log in now. And once we log in, we should we should be able to see the information we have actually created from the try hack me machine. So we're gonna use analyst password. And yep, this is the case. So we go to, we click on the case, FTP data exfiltration, and then to observables, add an observable. And can, here we can use um, file, and we can here select the packet capture. So go to desktop and select the packet capture. Okay, IOC not tags, packet. Capture file. This is a tag. And create. Okay. Now we have actually uploaded the observable. So that is how we create cases. Now at the very end, guys, let me show you one more thing. So this is the room, the hive project. It's, very, it's a very actually good example if you want to practice the hive and there's a machine you can deploy to see a live instance of the project now lastly there are a couple of questions to answer if you're interested what where are the TTPs imported from here's the answer according to the framework and lastly we have this upload the pika file as an observable we actually did this what's the flag obtained from Let's grab the link and it's supposed that we will be able to access the flag once we navigate to the link. Let me use try hack me browser, the machine itself, and open this. And this is the flag. THM files are observables. So we copy that over. And this is it. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and I will definitely see you in the next video.